grief. Good grief. Good grief. Hey, Charlie Brown, I've been watching you for a while, and it looks like you have a problem. What's the matter? But you see, Linus, I'm certainly having a world of right for change. Uh, hence the good grief, but can you give me some concrete examples of just what you mean, Charlie Brown? Take my dog for an example. Snoopy? Yeah. Remember how he used to sit on his doghouse as a World War I fighter pilot? Well, he's made a website for gamers. There's a blog and everything. We should be proud of him. He's an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur? He's my dog. He insists on a vegan diet. Because all of his developing buddies like that too. He doesn't want to play short cell on the team anymore. Well, dogs get hungry even with blogging on the internet, Charlie Brown. Times are changing. You know what? Maybe, maybe Schroeder can help you with this. Surely he'll be able to help. Hi, Schroeder! Hi, Schroeder! I got an idea. Yoink. Hey, what's the big idea taking my picture of Beethoven? You put that back. Just trying to get your attention somehow. Since when do you listen to an iPod when you practice piano? It's the wave of the future, Charlie Brown. Plus, it keeps Lucy from trying to whisper sweet nothings into my ear. Hmm, perhaps you have a point there. Hey guys, mind if I hang around here? Hi, Violet. Hi, I thought you had a baseball game today. I did. I got an argument with her with Patty, and she threw me out of the game. What was the argument about? She said I should have been able to turn a double and keep the other team from scoring. She takes the game so seriously. I told her if I was on Chuck's team, I wouldn't be getting yelled at. Perhaps we should take these issues up with a higher authority. Dr. Lucy! Lucy! At home. Oh, sorry. Dr. Lucy. At home. Sorry, you no longer take cash. We only take credit cards. Ah! America Express, may I put your credit card over this 2017's Master's Challenge? Lucy. Very well. I can see you're in need of help. No, let me guess. The Tin Man wants a heart, the Lion wants courage, the Scarecrow wants a brain, and the Round-Headed Kid can't figure out how to get home. Well, actually, we're here to know more about how we can deal with uh, struggling in this world uh, that God's created for us. Oh, well why didn't you say that in the first place? There are many ways that people can live a life of stewardship for God. The people of Epiphany Lutheran Church demonstrates this in many ways. Epiphany Lutheran Church? Life of stewardship? What's all this? Where have you been, Charlie Brown? Don't you remember what all the amazing things that Epiphany has been doing for the people they are reaching? <laughs> oh, I sort of forgot. A less sensitive therapist might call you a blockhead at this point, Charlie Brown. But fortunately, you have me instead, and I'm a real sweetie. Right, Schroeder? Schroeder's my sweetie. Actually, so Lucy. That's Dr. Lucy, like Dr. Phil, Dr. Laura, and... Dr. Doolittle. Always a charmer. So, Dr. Lucy, why don't you tell us more about the stewardship at Epiphany? Throughout scripture, God teaches us how to be stewards. Stewards of our time, money, and life. Perhaps with some help from my assistants, Sally and Peppermint Patty, we can review. Luke 21. 1 through 4 says, As he looked up, Jesus saw the rich putting into their, in their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. I tell you the truth, he said, This poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty and put in all she had to live on. We are to give generously. There are so many ministries at Epiphany that have, been give, that have been blessed by the generosity of others. The youth were able to attend the National Youth Gathering over the summer due to generous support by the congregation. Throughout donations and giving, the church has also helped support international missions throughout Operation Christmas Shout and Lutheran World Relief. Giving and supporting the church can have a global impact, Charlie Brown. Deuteronomy 16, 17 states, Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord your God that he has given you. Did you know Mr. Meisner, the school principal, sent out letters to help with the scholarships fund earlier this year? Throughout 
denominations, large and small. The school is able to contain its ministry and share the gospel with children. But that all sounds like it only applies to monetary giving. Big brother, that's no chip isn't just about money. It's how God wants all of us to be open to everything he puts in front of us in the future. Romans 12, 6-8 reads, In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God is giving you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take that responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. So, Charlie Brown, all the volunteers that help you with food pantry and the Super Bowl for caring, did you know that some of our youth and food pantry volunteers raised over $1,500 at ATB over Super Bowl weekend to go back into our food pantry? The service allows us to help others in the community. Matthew 8, 28, 8, 20 says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. I surely am with you always to the very end of the age. Teaching, Charlie. Did you know that when you volunteer to help with BBS or when your mom teaches Sunday school, you are all demonstrating stewardship? She's right. We need to strive for more of a God-filled heart, do what we can for the community, and live in this world of change. That all, uh, and it all lines up with Matthew 6, set, which says to lay up our treasures in heaven, which means to value what God values, which will require work on our part to change. We know that change, even God-pleasing change, always brings up some measure of grief. Maybe not all grief is bad. I was right all along. Good, Good grief, Charlie!